Sometimes all you need are a few simple ingredients to make a fast weeknight meal. Thanks so much. Worthy of a dinner party. So I have a perfect one today with just seven ingredients. It's a pork tenderloin cut into steaks, sauteed with a creamy mustard spicy sauce with prunes and rosemary. Completely yummy. Then we're off to Savannah for a whole day of deliciousness with the folks from The Gray. Their James Beard award-winning chef, Mashama Bailey, kicked things off with another easy, elegant meal. What I'm making tonight is a dandelion green salad and also a duck dirty rice. Later, the Gray's John Morisano takes me on a tour of Savannah's super secret food spots. Sausage gravy biscuits. You weren't kidding, that's a big portion. Yeah, it's a healthy yeah. portion. Back home, my old buddy, Floyd Cardoz, brings the easy elegance with his signature Indian kebabs. I love kebabs. OK. Everyday elegance is the name of the game, today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. You know, we get so many requests for really simple recipes, and the best way to do that is start with very few ingredients. So I have a perfect one today with just seven ingredients. It's a pork tenderloin cut into steaks, sauteed with a creamy mustard spicy sauce with prunes and rosemary. Completely yummy. So I just finished chopping up some shallots. Let me get those out of the way, and then we'll talk about pork tenderloin. I love pork tenderloin because it's such a tender cut of meat. And it, because it's so tender, it takes no time at all to cook, which is another secret of getting dinner on the table during the work week. So here we have a pork tenderloin. You want a big one. It looks like a lot, but it's probably only about a pound. If you can get a slightly larger one, even better, because this is going to serve four people. So I'm going to cut this uh, pork tenderloin into half-inch thick slices on the diagonal to make little steaks. The thing about pork tenderloin is it's very, very lean, and that's because it's tucked underneath the ribs and it's cushioned by other muscles, so it gets very little exercise. So it cooks very quickly because it's so tender. Don't confuse it with pork loin, which is larger and tougher than this cut. This is what you want to use. It's like beef tenderloin. I'm going to go wash my hands and my knife because I've just been working with raw meat. I'll be right back. So, I'm gonna season my pork. You wanna season it right before you put it in the pan. I'm just using salt. We don't need pepper because we're gonna have hot pepper flakes in here. I'm gonna use my tongs to turn them over so I don't have to go wash my hands again. Let me crank this up, make sure it's good and hot. Okay, we're gonna use a little bit of olive oil. And when I see it uh, nice and it sort of gets wavy, then we know it's hot enough. But we want to get a nice sear on the pork. Uh, this is pretty thin. It's only going to take about two minutes aside. So I'm going to get my um, pork in. That's the noise you want to hear, because we want a quick sear. Uh, we're not going to turn the pork steaks until you can feel them move a little bit, which means you've got a sear on one side. I need about a half a cup of these prunes. Now, I love prunes. They've got great depth of flavor, almost a little bit of a smokiness. They're not only good for digestion, but they're also good for women for their bone health. Now, uh, just a little tip. When you're working with dried fruit and you don't want it to stick to the knife, you just spray your knife with a little bit of olive oil. There we go. And then it's so much easier to cut them in half, and you don't end up with them all lined up on the side of your knife. There we go. We want about a half of a cup, and I can see that my pork steaks are ready to be turned. There we go. All right, those are going to take another two minutes. I can see these are, you know, just a little bit of give. We're going to get them out of the pan. Look at all that wonderful brown stuff at the bottom of the pan. That's where all the flavor is. It's not going to be cooked again. Uh, it's about 140. You can certainly take its temperature, but if it feels 
firm with a little bit of give, you know we're about 140. I'm gonna cover it up just to keep it warm, let it rest. I'm gonna add another half tablespoon of oil to the pan and my shallots, two tablespoon shallots. And just give them a minute to get some color on them. adds nice depth of flavor, onions and garlic. I could have added garlic, but I was trying to keep the number of ingredients down. I'm gonna measure some white wine. I need a half a cup. And a dry white wine is what we're looking for here. I'm gonna take the pan off the heat and add the wine to it. Wine actually isn't high enough alcohol to catch fire, but I just like to uh, promote good habits. You don't want to ever add, let's say, brandy to a hot pan. It could catch fire and then you'd be sorry. Uh, while that's reducing, I'm going to get my rosemary ready. You know, we need about a tablespoon and a half of uh, rosemary. You just mound it up so it's all one and then cross slice it. Okay, I'm going to say that's enough. Oops. Now hot pepper flakes, about anywhere from a quarter to a half teaspoon, depending on how spicy you like it. It's up to you, you can leave it out. One cup chicken broth. And three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. Heavy cream's amazing because when you reduce it, it gets very, very thick. And so you don't need to add flour or any other kind of thickener. You'll end up with a beautiful creamy sauce. Let me also get the prunes in there so they can sort of soften as everything reduces. And I'm gonna just simmer this until it gets very creamy and thick. This is just about ready. You can see how it's thickened quite a bit. I'm gonna add the mustard and taste it. We're using Dijon mustard, about two teaspoons. I like it, it gives sort of an umami hit to it, as well as some salt and acid. Doesn't that look yummy? Now, I'm going to take the juices from the pork. You see those juices? Um, I'm going to let it simmer a bit while I get the pork on the plate. But if it gets too thick, all you need to do is add water. Let's, this is one portion. We'll do, oh, I don't know, three happy little medallions. Oh, what the heck, we'll do four. So now we want to put some of the uh, prunes on top and then spoon the sauce on it. It's an interesting combination of flavors you may not have thought of. Trust me, they go so nicely together. And just a little bit of a garnish. Why not put some rosemary in there? I've got some roasted potatoes and some steamed broccoli to go with it. You're going to spend time making the pork. Have the side dishes be very simple. See, we don't even need a sharp knife because pork tenderloin is so tender. Mmm. Wow. You're going to just love this. Pork tenderloin with spicy mustard cream sauce and prunes. One of the coolest restaurants in Savannah is the Old Greyhound Station, gussied up into a sleek new restaurant, The Grey. Nice first push, everybody. And at its helm is a former local girl who came back to put her stamp on Southern classics with a modern twist. Kind of like the old bus station itself. Except that space was segregated and this space is run by a powerful young black woman. Yeah, it's ironic, but Mashama's food speaks for itself. I found that out when I went to cook with her at the home of her business partner, Jono Morisano. All right, so what I'm making tonight is a dandelion green salad with some squash and pecans and a little chili darbo for some spice, and also a duck dirty rice. Right. Ooh, yeah. that's exciting. So I'm excited. Yeah. I'm gonna go get some wine. All right. Oh, I think we need that, yes. Absolutely. See you when you get back. 
All right. Um, what you can do is mince the garlic and cut the sun-dried tomatoes really small. Okay. That'll be perfect. All righty, I can do that. And you're going to get started yep. on the dressing. And I'll grab the pecans out the oven. Now, this is a fascinating dressing. Did you come up with this? Yeah, I think I did. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm obsessed with nut milks lately. Okay. Um, just you know, isn't it funny how you go through fads <laughs> yeah, exactly. when you're a chef? Yes. I love the texture of them. I love the complexity of them. Mm -hmm. This adds a little bit of body to the dressing. About a cup of toasted pecans. Mm -hmm. I toasted them at 300 degrees just to get that even sort of toasted flavor. Okay. So I'm going to add a cup of water. Okay. Because I want it to be nice and thick. Uh -huh. And, and you can add it all in together. Right. And then I'll put the lid on. Okay. And now you turn it on. There you go. All right. So you need to strain that because there's still bits of pecan in there? Exactly, and there's still bits of the skin. So, you know, just to have a smoother texture, I like to strain it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to if you like the way it tastes. So tell me, yeah, you're going to put that in, and then let's talk about the sugar. As you said, you're adding sugar to counterbalance the bitterness of mm -hmm. the dandelions. The bar manager at the Gray uses this raw sugar, so I decided to incorporate it into a dressing, which I think it works. Yeah. Sure. So we did a simple syrup okay. and see how dark it is from the molasses that's in the raw sugar. So it's equal parts sugar and water. And, and we bring it to a boil and we whisk it together and we just let it cool and it gets like this syrupy. So it melts. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it wonderful. melts and dissolves. So we're going to pour half a cup of the pecan milk in there. into the bowl with the garlic. Okay. And then we're gonna also pour a half a cup of the cane. Half a cup of each, okay. Of the raw okay. syrup, okay. half a cup of each. Okay. And we're gonna pour a cup of red wine vinegar. We're making a big batch. We're making a huge batch, okay. but this will keep in your fridge for months. Three cups of blended oil, and this is good to do in a blender too. Yes. If you're by yourself. A half a teaspoon of chili Half dough. a tablespoon. Half a tablespoon. That's what you told me before. I'm just repeating what you said. <laughs> so I put about two nice pinches of salt in there. Okay, good. And I'm gonna get And we can add the sun-dried tomatoes as well. Okay. Now, sun-dried tomatoes is not southern, I, I don't think. It's not, mm -hmm. but... Um, yeah, I like them. <laughs> and All they're right. a good substitute for hey, raisins, isn't I that, think. Isn't, oh, that's an interesting yeah. idea. Substitute for raisins. So I guess it's a little awkward pouring it over the salad with that, so we'll just... Yeah, we'll just put it in here. Yeah, we'll just put a little bit, which I think is plenty. Okay, so we'll put these dandelion greens... I think this is enough for the three of us. So. Yes, I think so. I Put love salad. Around. So what you got there? So I have some roasted butternut squash. Okay. We have a, a cup of that. We're mm -hmm. going to add that in here. That's nice. We have some chopped up ground pecans. We're mm -hmm. going to add that. When I dress the salad, I like to go around the outside because if you dump it in the middle, the leaves tend to get drenched. We're going to garnish the salad with these edible flowers. They're marigolds. All right, so we'll toss, toss, toss. This is making me hungry. Oh, awesome. Let's park this back here. Yeah. All right. So one down, one to go. So what's up next? OK, so next we're going to do the duck dirty rice. Oh, yum. And so um, what you can do is cut a quarter cup of onion for me. OK. And two tablespoons of garlic while I pick the duck confit. All right, all right, I will do that. OK, now you have to explain what duck confit is, because not everybody knows. <laughs> Well, duck confit is um, duck that has been preserved in, in its own duck fat. Oh. So at the yes. restaurant, we make it ourselves. You can buy it online or buy it at a gourmet um, grocery store. Right. But we actually make it at the restaurant ourselves. We season it with a little sugar and a little salt and some spices. And we're going to put two tablespoons of duck fat in the pan. OK. I have to hose down again. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add the onions and garlic while you're hosing down. Yeah. OK. All right. Perfect. So we're just trying to get these sort of softened. Yep. So we're going to soften these guys up, and you'll start to smell them. Right. And in the meanwhile, we need to chop up some duck livers. Oh, let me get that out of the refrigerator. Awesome. OK. Here we go. <laughs> the duck livers are the part that makes it dirty. Oh, okie dokie. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. Now, you are soaking it in milk. Why? It softens it up. It yeah. brines it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's a tenderizer. Mm -hmm. It tenderizes Also, it, it takes out that gaminess. Yeah, we, cool. So you want this cut up into what? Just a mincy chop. Mincy chop, yep. so small. Almost as big as the garlic. Oh, oh wow, so yeah. tiny. Yeah. OK. Mm. OK. 
Okay, so, so this is brandy. Yeah, Ooh. so we're gonna add two tablespoons of brandy. So okay, brandy. so we just reduce that down? Just reduce that down, it adds a fragrance to it and just kind of adds a little bit Ooh, more complex. Oh, I can get it. it. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Okay, so what's going to happen next? So next we add our Carolina gold rice, three cups of that. So southern. Carolina rice. Uh -huh. And then, now this is fascinating. Right. So this is farro? This is farro verde. Okay, and that uh, is? And this is a uh, wheat berry, and it has a, a bouncy, fresh texture to nice. it. And flavor that just kind of um, elevates it a little bit. Nice. Beautiful looking. Okay. Do you want me to chop this parsley? Yes, please. Okay, while, awesome. you're, while you're uh, stirring away. So once I get this sort of coated and heated through, mm -hmm. I like to add in the duck, the pulled duck legs. Okay. Wow. <laughs> now this this would feed quite a few people. <laughs> and we forgot an important ingredient, which you're going to tell me what it is. Right, some gumbo filet. This uh, ground sassafras leaves. The same thing you make uh, root beer out of. Exactly, exactly. This is sort of like the secret ingredient. Yes, gotcha. <laughs> and it's a little bit of a thickener too, right? It is yes. exactly. Yes. Probably going to need to add salt. Awesome. Do you want some pepper too? Yes, please. Okay. You know, sir, let's add a little bit of that chopped parsley just for some color. Put some parsley on it, and it's like. Fresh. <laughs> exactly. Here, you want me? Why don't you hold and I'll do this so that you don't, because that's heavy. Should we sprinkle the rest on top? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Nice and green and yeah. herbaceous. Yes. Perfect. All right. Okay, I think Dirty we're ready duck? to go set up the table. Yeah, Jonna should so be back So you take soon. that and I'll get the salad and let's head out. Okay, great. Oh, there you are, John. That was perfect hey, timing. Hey, ladies. How are what you? What are you scoring us? We're going to have a little Barolo with this. Oh, good. I'm so excited. Yeah. One of favorite things. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Let's have a little yeah, start somewhere. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. This has been this great is fun. so much fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yes. So, you are going to take me shopping tomorrow. We're going to go around. Um, I don't mean shoe shopping or anything. Well, we can do that, too. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're gonna meet tomorrow morning at the Sentient Bean, uh, Otter's favorite coffee shop in Savannah. Oh, I can't wait. Are you gonna take the dogs? We'll take oh, the dogs. Of course, we must. Oh, okay, fine. let's dig in. All right. All right, sounds great. Hey, Jono. The next morning, I met Jono at his favorite coffee shop. So this is the Sentient Bean. Okay. Where we come after our morning walk through the park. Should we go check yeah, it out? Yeah, let's do it. The Sentient Bean is a hangout where you can get a cup of caffeine or listen to live music. Very the bean, cool. as it's known I love that. Oh, here, let me hold this so oh, you can great. get the voice. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, that, that, was, uh, that reminds me of my hippy-dippy days. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So the Bean is one of those places when uh, Carol, my wife, and I first drove through town, um, we stopped at, and it was really one of those aha moments for us, like, wow, we could really spend some time in Savannah. And, I can um, see why. Yeah, it's really a cool spot. Here's another cool spot. What's this? So Lachey is uh, by far the best wine store in town, in my opinion. Oh, I'm just a lover person. of old world wines. And Christian, the owner of this shop, is old world centric. Uh, <laughs> Germany, that. Austria, Alsace yeah. are the places that um, I think he would spend all of his uh, time if he could. Savannah's famous Forsyth Park was just a short stroll away. And now from here, we're going to go to a place you'll only find in Savannah, a breakfast spot uh, for the ages. He was right. Nairobi's Grits and Gravy isn't on a tourist map, but it should be. Uh, I think it's a good oh, wow. choice. Thank you, sir. Sausage gravy biscuits. You weren't kidding, that's a big portion. Yeah, it's a healthy yeah. portion. This is really busy, huh? Yeah, as my dad, my dad would call this place a working man's joint. Right. And then this is kind of the food that sustains people, right? You know, the starchy carbs and the grits and the off cuts of meat. These biscuits are good. On Indian Street, another hidden gem, the service brewery run by an army vet with a mission. Kevin, um, the founder and owner, wanted to build a brewery that focused on employing vets and honoring vets, and um, that's what he's built here. Everybody that lives in Savannah is really proud of this place. It's one of the first micro brews that popped up in town, and we all think of service as ours. 
here in Savannah. On the way home, John O stops at the original, the ultimate neighborhood dive bar. This bar is an oasis at the end of a busy day. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? And so you, I just know that I can come here at the end of the night, have a nice glass of wine. One white, one red. Yeah, you know, I love it. Yeah. It makes your mind up for it. You know, you always run into someone at the original, and you can talk to some people that you haven't caught up with in a while, or you can just sit by yourself and have a quiet glass of wine and, you know, think about the day and think about tomorrow. Italy was so good. I love Indian food, and no one does it better than my buddy, Chef Floyd Cardoz. Kebabs are a common street food in India, but I'm sure Floyd's kebabs are better than any street food in India, right? I love kebabs. Okay. But I'm, I'm a little confused. We're making these kebabs, but we're making burger kebabs? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good way to call them. You get different kinds of kebabs in India. Mm -hmm. You get the kebabs that are skewered. Uh -huh. uh, you get the kebabs that are, which are like yakitori, mm -hmm. which are done on, on, on charcoal. Mm -hmm. And you get kebabs that are done on a griddle, which are called shami kebabs. Uh -huh. Now, this kebab is kind of a mix between a sea kebab, which was a, a kebab on a skewer, mm -hmm. and a shami kebab, which is a flattened one on a griddle. Okay. Okay? I've taken something from the north, I've taken something from my home. Uh, so it's this basically... This is a Floyd kebab. This is a Floyd kebab. Okay, I got it. All right. So I'm grating uh, two tablespoons of ginger, and we're working with jalapeno this time? We're going to use jalapeno. I also got oh. some garlic. Okay. And we need onion too, right? So I'm yes. going to put the onion here. We have two cups of onion because I know you're dying to use my little tool here, my little bench scraper. And we also have some ground beef. You know, while you're chopping that, can I ask you about yes. garam masala? Because that's going to be the spice mix that we're going to add. Can you tell us what is garam masala? Okay, garam masala is one of the spice mixes that are very common to Indian food, mm -hmm. especially in the north. And it's more of a finishing spice. A oh, finishing. So you always add it towards the end, or you add it to something that you're going to cook very quickly. If you're making a braise, uh -huh. like like a curry, you'll add it at the end. So we have a, a garlic. And you want me to chop up some cilantro. cilantro. Okay. So I have my ground beef. Add a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. And we have the egg. And pepper. Did you put your garam masala in already? We need about a half a tablespoon. OK, I'm going to just estimate, guesstimate. Should I mix this with my hands? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, how does that look? So now what we want to do is, mm -hmm. this is what I normally say, is mm -hmm. once you mix mm -hmm. a kebab, mm -hmm. uh, you always want to know, see how it tastes. What? Yeah. OK. <laughs> You're going to cook it first? Yeah. You, you had, that was like the drum roll. I was like, he's going to stick that in his mouth. I do this all the time, too, with something I can't eat raw, yeah. so I make a yeah. test pilot. I make a small test. So we're going to take it out. It's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, and we're going to taste it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a piece, and I'm going to have a piece. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, that is delicious. It's got some heat to it, but you could always put less chili. And we're going to eat it with some yogurt, so that's going to cool Wow. It. Woo, that is yummy. Okay, so show me what's next. Now what I'm going to do is, mm -hmm. this is the way I make my burgers at home, this is the way I make these kebabs okay. at home. I make the meat into, into balls, mm -hmm. like so. Mm -hmm. And you can make them as big as you like, okay? Once I have the balls, I take plastic wrap, mm -hmm. and I make it into oh, nice patties. That's a good little tip. And then I put this back in the fridge till I'm ready to cook them. Was that about the right size? You want to make it a little tighter. Tighter. OK, pack it. That was a hot jalapeno. That was. And then we're going to take a little bit of oil and just lightly brush it. Again, canola oil. Lightly. Theme of the day. Yeah. OK, just a little bit so it doesn't stick. Exactly. Just. Yeah. So show me, what are our accompaniments here? So we're going to serve this with, like, every traditional kebab. We are going to do yogurt. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put a little bit of tomato on that, make like a raita and lime juice. And I like to add a little bit of mint, mm -hmm. uh, add a little bit of... Uh, just whole mint leaves? Just pick them and put them in, add a little bit of ginger and spinach, uh -huh. you know, just to make it a whole complete meal. Uh -huh. Oh, 
ok so what we're just going to turn these in a few minutes and then we can assemble everything and we're going to eat outside in my garden that would be awesome yes so we've got chardonnay here but what would you recommend with indian food you could have it with red wines, Shiraz, or Merlot. Anything with goes. Anything goes. Yeah. As long as it's not an old wine. Yeah. And as long as there's not too much of chili in there. Yeah. You, if it, there's a lot of chili, then I would say go with the Shiraz or, or, or Zinfandel. Okay. These, these work very well. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming. I hope we've inspired you to travel to India during the week in your very own kitchen. I'm Sarah Moulton here with Floyd Cardoz. I'll see you next time for more of Sarah's weeknight meals. Let's dig in. What I like to do is... Well, uh, like to add a little bit of lime on top. Mm -hmm. mm. That's so good.